All right, well, what's on the bench today? Uh, time to do some more retro computing. Uh, I am an MSI guy, so um, I was poking around for some kind of vintage stuff to play with, and uh, this ran across my, uh, my eye. This was on eBay, and I thought it was something that it's not, and then I discovered it's something that I do know what it is. So anyway, uh, what is it? It's an 8085 microprocessor, uh, microprocessor uh, development kit or training, training device type of thing. Um, so it has a uh, 8085 processor. It has a, a display for address and memory and the keyboard. And it can run a little program called a monitor. And so we have a monitor in ROM here. And when you turn it on, then you can examine memory and store memory and execute programs and single step and things like that. So back, back when I was doing this kind of thing, I learned on a machine similar to this back in 1970. Four, 75, let's see, 75. I think 75. I think 75 was the first time I touched a machine like this. Anyway, um, this has a really strange uh, name, has strange manufacturer names on it. So we'll go up here, up here at the top. Okay. And we have URDA which is the University Research and Development Associates Incorporated in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, Microlab. So you'd think, oh, that's the company who designed this thing, right? You go, okay. Um, well, the, the box kind of seems familiar. Uh, it's got a built-in built -in power supply. Let's see, it's got a power cord on it. And if we flip it around to the back, it has a very uh, old friend here, E and L Instruments Incorporated. That was the that was the company that I was the first yeah, used in 1975, 76, something like that. Uh, was it, it was an E and L trainer. It was an 8080 trainer. This is a uh, this is a uh, 8085 trainer, so it's a little bit newer. Um, it has some built in uh, built in power supply, so at plus 5 and plus and minus 12, which is kind of nice. Um, looks like these are hand marked by whoever owned it. Um, I'm assuming that all the BNCs, though, are original. You just had to kind of know from the color code in your manual that that's what they were. So it's good that they wrote, they wrote down what they were on them. Uh, there is some Dymo label thing over here. TC31906 PO New York. I don't know what that is. It looks like uh, whoever owned this, maybe that was their internal tracking system or I don't know. They put a mark on it. All right, so there's that. Um, and then if you go around the internet and you try to find this thing, you won't, but you will find things very similar very, very similar. The very first ones were sold by Intel because they wanted to sell microprocessors. And so they, they came out with uh, some boards. I've covered those on the channel before. They had some, some uh, of their own microbus uh, cards and you could get 8080, 85, 8085 cards and things like that in it. But they made some development kits and they had an SDK. Um, and this is an SDK 85 made by Intel. And it seems as though the layout of the PC board was somehow shared among companies. I don't know how that works. If you remember back then, let me know. But Intel, I think, could would give you the artwork and then you could produce it on their own. They didn't they didn't care about these boards. They cared about selling chips. So I think they, they kind of gave that away as a jump start. 
And so you could get these branded as ENL or somebody else or Intel. Anyway, there's several flavors of the SDK 85 out there, okay? Which is good for us because uh, the schematics and the software that's inside the ROM will all be the same. Um, the keyboards will look different. Uh, this one has different keys than the Intel one. Um, but other than that, Okay, so uh, when I got the thing, I turned it on and nothing happened. Uh, the displays lit up 888888, kind of halfway. They weren't really right. And I went, uh-oh, the thing's broken. And I thought, well, anyway, I'll be able to make some videos on me repairing this thing, okay? And I thought, well, the first thing I should do is uh, make a copy of the ROM in case something goes bad. I can always re reproduce it. And that was before I understood that it was an Intel uh, ROM and source codes already available and stuff. But anyway, I thought I would make a co copy of that. And uh, this is a UV erasable. There's a sticker over it, but this is a UV erasable ROM. And parallel ports. <laughs> So it's an 8755. 80, 80, an 8755 is ROM plus I.O. And so this brings its I.O. up, a port here and a port here. You can add a second one and have a port here and a port here and extra ROM. So that's what this is here. And then uh, these guys are RAM plus I.O. also. Uh, or are these, do these have the RAM in it? Let's see, this is the 8155. Yeah, 8155s are RAM plus I.O. 8255s are just I.O. So these are these are RAM plus RAM plus I.O. And there's two of those. I think this one is probably added by whoever owned this thing, maybe? Or maybe they just supplied it with both? I don't know. Uh, it also has an 82. I'm getting off. I'm getting off the the, the story. Um, I was going to make a copy of this, this 8755. So I went to my EEPROM programmer, and it's not compatible. You can't read these. And I went online. There's a whole bunch of people who have written their own programmers and stuff for these things. So maybe I'll do that someday, but I'm not there yet. But anyway, uh, then there's an 8279, which is a keyboard display controller, which handles all of this part over here. Uh, there's some I.O. bus expanders, um, 8212s, uh, or these are 8221s, yeah, oh, 8320, no, 8212s, I read it right, 8212s, 1983 is when they were made, <laughs> 8212 and 8212, those are just latches, okay, so there's a latch here and a latch here, and you can do things there, looks like you can add buffers and stuff for the expansion. They give you a prototyping area, which is really interesting. So you can put your own stuff over here. Um, and then, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, and these have timers as well. These are RAM plus IO plus timers. And so there's a timer out, output here. Um, then way up in the corner here is the TTY interface. <laughs> not not a, mon not a uh, RS-232 and not anything normal. It's a 20 milliamp current loop TTL interface. So yeah, it's 20 milliamp current loop. So I'm gonna have to build an adapter that re converts a current loop into uh, RS-232 and then we'll be able to put a monitor on here and the, the uh, monitor monitor program will be able to uh, talk to the uh, talk to the, uh, uh, the uh, display over here so we can give that give that a try okay anyway uh, okay so when I first turned it on like I said it didn't work and so what are you gonna do so I pulled this out to go make a copy of it and in the process I looked at it and I went there's a pin bent on this thing and uh, so it was pin 40. Pin 40 was bent under. Uh, don't know if this thing ever worked. I guess it did because they have a little, dis I mean, they worked on stuff over here. So it probably worked for a while and then it just decided not making contact any longer. So I, I bent the pin straight again and put it back in and now it, now it works, okay? Now, when you bought this, you could get it as a kit from Intel. 
okay, the Intel version you bought as a kit. And then this one was built, uh, assembled and everything. So that's one of the reasons you would get it from these other companies. Intel wouldn't build you one. You had to buy it as a kit. And as part of the kit, uh, the Intel kit, came a piece of red plastic. This is not from the kit, but we can use it. A piece of red plastic here so that when we turn the device on, we can actually see the... Uh, we can actually see the numbers over here. Let's see if I can uh, change the exposure a little bit here. Okay, it says 8085. Look at that. Let me bring it a little bit closer here. Okay, 8085. And then you can do things like uh, examine uh, examine memory, zero. Let's see, oops, reset, substitute memory, zero, 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 next. So, at location zero, zero, zero is 3E. And then you can like step through memory and C3 was a jump to zero, 01F3. And then if you go to zero, 01F3, you could do uh, substitute zero, 01F3. And then you could go there, Th then it starts up at 32. No up, bop, 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 bop. Anyway, you get the idea. So you can exp you can zoom through memory. You can you can then uh, program memory. You can tell it to execute. Um, you can single step. Uh, you could do something like uh, examine register A. Register A has zero in it. B, C. Here's all the registers the H and L registers, the stack pointer register, high and low, the program counter, high and low. So, yeah, so it teaches you all about the 8085. Very, very nice. Okay, anyway, enough for this video. Uh, I'm going to play with it for a while, and uh, I think it'll be fun.